boxers that will secure a spot to London. It's the eight semifinalists, and then those that lose, those that lost to the ultimate gold and silver medalist. So if Robson goes on to win the gold or win the silver, in other words, if he makes it to the finals, then that will likely assure a spot for Lomachenko just the same. So he's not out yet, so it seems. But it's no longer in his hands, and that's the difference. Let's take a look at our next round, our next bout, rather. We've gotten through a quarter of the matchups here in the evening session. We've gotten through half of the men's lightweight, and now we're about to embark on the second half, this bout between Yasnir Toledo from Cuba and Silom RD from Thailand. Toledo, he got sixth place in the 2009 Aiba World Championships in Milan, first place in the 2010 Pan American Championships in Quito, Ecuador, first place in the 2011 first Pan American Games qualifier in Cumana, Venezuela, and first place in the 2011 Cuban National Team Championships. So Toledo, ready to, to take on the world. Silom Ardi from Thailand. He was in the 2005 World Senior Championships in Mining, China. He was in the 2007 games, took seventh in Chicago. He was also in the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, where he lost to Abdelkar Chadi of Algeria just by a one-point margin in the first round. And in 2009, he was also in Milan, where he lost to Albert Selimov, the aforementioned Russian boxer, in the third preliminary. Of course, this year, he took first at the Thai National Open Championship. So Toledo out of Cuba in the red, RD out of Thailand in the blue. And RD lunges forward with a left-right combination. Check that, Toledo. Here comes Artie with a right left of his own. Artie boxing in the orthodox stance. Toledo, southpaw style. And now Toledo lunges forward. Artie does a good job of retreating, avoiding harm. They lock up here in the center. And there's R.D. lunging forward with Toledo's back against the ropes. And R.D. now, hands up high, looking for an opportunity to get in there, while Toledo is backpedaling just a bit. Nice left hand by R.D. So we're almost at the halfway point. There's been a lot of grabbing, a lot of holding here in the center of the ring. We are in the Haydar Aliyev Sports Complex in Baku, Azerbaijan. It's the 2011 Aiba World Championships. I am Castle Chalice calling the action here in the B ring. And there's a quick short right hand by RD. Sends Toledo back just a bit. Lunging right by Toledo, falls short. It's a little quiet point in the action, a little lull with a minute to go in the first round. A sharp right hand, a baby hook by Toledo. That one scored and generated some applause from the crowd and followed it up with a left. Right left by RD again. Lunging left by RD, which falls short, and now Toledo comes back with a left. So there's an ebb and flow to this bout so far in round number one. Each boxer giving a little, taking a little, looking to capitalize on a mistake of the other. There haven't been too many mistakes so far. And now a little wrestling, a little roughhousing tactic as the Cuban hits the, hits the canvas hard. The referee gonna caution RD about such maneuvering. 10 seconds left in the round. (laughs) 
That's it. Round one in the books. See the score after one round. It's five to three, Cuba over Thailand. The referee standing solemn in the ring. Solomon, not to be confused with solemn in. The wise one, the king. And now RD throws a quick right hand in Toledo. Toledo pretty light on his feet there. You see he's got some good movement. A skinny little guy. He's got long, lean legs. Come out like bean poles, but they're very effective. Notice how he's so light on his feet that he could get in there, commit to his punches, and then step away. Very impressive to see the way he bounces on his feet like that. A lot of spring in his step, and that's great, especially when it comes time to retreat in advance in a moment's notice and also to circle away See now that Toledo is trying to do his work from the outside while RD is trying to do his work from the inside. And now they tie up in the corner and Toledo pushes RD's head back in the corner and now they wrestle again. So it's a sloppy fight. It's not either boxer's fault directly. It's what happens sometimes. Styles make fights and when they blend it looks good and when they don't it looks a little sloppy. There's not too much clean punching going on. That's partly because of good defense by both boxers and partly because, well, somewhat of a, a lull in the pace. There's a lot of interruptions, as you could see. A lot of self-inflicted self interruptions. Either because there's a nice sharp right hand, though, by Toledo. That one looked good. What happens is, they end up locking, locking up in the clinch. They trip over one another's legs. They stay away from each other. Things that aren't promoted towards exciting interaction between two boxers in the ring like this. There's a lot of this. It sort of slows down the pace, takes the rhythm out of it. But at this point, the only people that they need to impress are themselves. They need to, well, let's take that back. They need to impress the judges first, and by doing so, hopefully impress themselves with the outcome of this bout. So right now, the question is, what are the judges seeing? They saw the Cuban up by two in the first. What will they see at the end of round two? It's been a tough bout to score, I imagine, because of the, the interruptions, because of the less than clean-looking punches being thrown by the boxers but the judges have a great vantage point there's five of them around the ring these judges that are brought here to these world championships are the best that Aiba has to offer and look at that Cuba goes up 13 to 7 so a six point lead by the Cuban boxer and again we've seen this time and again it is extremely hard to overcome a six point deficit especially going into the third round that's just by the nature of the, the score the scorekeeping system here in the amateurs and we'll see what happens now the 
Thai boxer is getting instructions from his corner. Salam Ardi, 174 centimeters tall. These are lightweights. Ripping right to the body by Toledo. The referee's going to caution RD. And now a nice sharp right hand by Toledo. Look at that, the way that Toledo throws that from his hip. It's an uppercut that lands solid on the jaw of RD. And that's how he's scoring his points, with occasional one-punch clean shots. He's not throwing punches in bunches. He hasn't thrown many combinations, not since the beginning of the first round. But when he does land the clean punch, it's very impressive. He throws him with laser speed and pinpoint accuracy. And that's no doubt what's kept him with a comfortable lead through much of this bout. RD now finding himself playing the necessary role of the aggressor because he's got to sort of steal back some of those points from Toledo. And RD is looking for any opportunity to get in there. I see a lot of opportunity in the midsection of Toledo. If RD could somehow figure out a way, but he's got to be careful from quick lefts like that by Toledo, which are going to score and work against his efforts here. Maybe he could start with a lead jab, double it up, triple it up. It's a rare punch, unfortunately, because it's such an easy punch and such an effective punch to throw. It's actually a combination of punches. It's a double jab. It's a triple jab. You double it up, you triple it, and it doesn't take hardly any extra energy to throw. You're already in there throwing one, but what it does is it bothers your opponent and it distracts him. He's not expecting two, and he's certainly not expecting three, and while he's trying to figure out what's going on, you could follow it up with a right to the body and score some clean shots because those jabs are going to cause him to bring his hands up, cause him to flinch, cause him to try and avoid those punches, and he's going to leave himself wide open in the belly for a right to the body. So something RD may be able to do more effectively to try and rack up some points here. Not that right there. Throwing punches into the high guard of Toledo won't get him any points. Not unless they're thrown with enough rapidity to somehow penetrate the guard, which it just doesn't look like that's happening. Looks like that is the end of the bout. Not exactly sure what happened there, but perhaps the Thai boxer had just seen enough. We'll get an answer to that one right quick. Cuban boxer gets the victory. Yasnier Toledo, impressive work. That one's in the books now as well. You can see the action here from round number two. <laughs> Toledo's able to evade much of that stuff that RD was throwing, and now RD 
starts to apply the pressure. He starts to move forward. He's got Toledo's back against the ropes. He eats a small left hand there. Wasn't that much to his detriment. There's another left hand, very fast. Quick on the draw is Yasnier Toledo. 